Welcome, everybody. My name is Michael Malcolm Bjorklund. I am a District 2 Director for FSPA and a Director at Large for JEA. Today, you're going in through and welcoming you into the world of color. And Spin the Wheel is predicated in the fact that I want you to get to know colors a little bit better. I want you to be able to look at what looks good, what doesn't look so good, and what are some of those hot trends that we look at getting into 2020. So let's get going. So when you were growing up, your teachers taught you about RGB and CMYK, especially when you got to the journalism one level. And you knew what primary colors were, and you knew maybe knew what secondary colors were, but do you know split complementary and complementary colors? Those sort of things are sort of um, what we're trying to talk about today. So first thing we're going to look at is 2020. And 2020 was, uh, through Pantone's eyes, was supposed to be back to the roots, back to classic business style blues, right? So we're looking at if you know icons well for your app store, uh, this is a very traditional blue color. Facebook uses it, LinkedIn, if you've ever heard of LinkedIn, LinkedIn uses it. Um, Facebook's is slightly lighter, but it's very close to this. But you can see this color blue and pretty much everything you do in life. So again, it's called classic blue and we're gonna watch a little bit of video on this blue and Pantone's rationale for choosing it as the color of 2020. Skies of blue. Oceans of light, palettes of purpose. A new era dawns at dusk. Imprinted in our psyches as a restful color, classic blue brings a sense of peace and tranquility to the human spirit. Expressing constancy, Pantone Classic Blue is a reliable blue hue we can depend on, giving us the confidence we need to chart our path forward. I found that interesting uh, when they talked about the Classic Blue and sort of um, a sense of confidence and getting us through some of these changes. And obviously nobody, when this color came out, was introduced late last year. Nobody knew we would be in the situation we're in today. But let's take a look at some of the blues and where do we see them in life. And you might even be a fan of this color blue. 
Um, it says we're living in a time that requires trust and faith. It is a kind of consistency and confidence that is expressed in Pantone 194052 classic blue, a solid and dependable blue hue that we can always rely on. Imbued with uh, deep resonance, Rosanna's um, classic blue provides an anchory foundation of boundless blue of the factor of the vast and infinite the evening sky classic blue encourages us to look beyond the obvious to expand our thinking challenging us to think more deeply increase our perspective and open the flow of communication so where do we see these blues look at the home to your left on the bottom left hand screen we've got a beautiful um, entryway it sort of dark goes well with the, the blacks and the grays that you see in the book and the whites obviously white will definitely pop when you're using this color you can still use it with good colorful um, hues to, uh, and tones, just like the reds and the yellows that we see in the woman's dress. This blue allows us to use brighter colors and it doesn't mute them, it, it actually makes them stand out even more. And when I say mute them, it, they don't get lost, like they're not gonna be hidden in anything. Um, when you use a classic blue that Pantone is using and then you use a brighter color it's really gonna pop and it won't get lost in the whole mix and then on the right hand side you sort of see um, the color swatch the blue and you can see how the yellows really pop out and the whites pop out those colors um, with this classic blue are going to make your design even stand out more we can see this in the afternoon sky with white again so if you're looking for a way to do this visually if you put a this color classic blue in a background and then use a white to have it pop out you're going to notice that stand out even more and then they showed you on their website they showed you um, the midnight sky with the moon and the, the slight yellowish uh, tone whitish um, reflection from the moon as well but as dark and classic 2020 is in terms of colors, 2019 is definitely not that. 2019 hot trends were pla plastic pink, UFO green, proton purple, okay? So according to Shutterstock.com, when they were coming up with their colors for 2019, again, this was last year, they liked the brighter colors. They love those shiny colors, those pink, those green, those purples. They looked at the colors that were really in, in sort of that 1990 to 93, 94 look, and even mid 80s in some instances, because you start seeing those colors come alive, okay? And the pink, harkens back to a certain iconic toy but carries a whole new intensity of meaning the uf ufo green bright green invokes lush countrysides along with whirling rows of binary code a la the matrix and that proton purple think buzzing neon signs humming devices vibrating phones purple represents the palpable positive charge in our daily lives and where did we see that? In, in the United States, um, they did a poll, Shutterstock, and said, what are your favorite colors? And the United States overwhelmingly said, our favorite color through their poll was that purple color. Whereas some other countries went with the purple, went with the pinks. Ours was that green. Ours said, no, yours is the green. And you can see with the peacock, the, how the, the colors of the feathers really come to life. And you see where that UFO green and you see your number there if you wanted to test that color out on one of your pages. Same goes with the plastic, perp, uh, plastic pink and that plastic pink sort of over a desert and mountains and all the rest. And the proton purple, sort of a nature-y um, feel as well. Maybe sunsets um, overlooking any flowers. And here's the color of the year for 2019. Living Coral is Pantone's 2019 color of the year. The company describes Pantone 161546 Living Coral as vibrant but mellow, saying it reflects an innate need for optimism and joyful pursuits and authentic and immersive experiences that enable connection and intimacy. Lori Pressman, vice president of the Pantone Color Institute, pointed to the connection between culture and color, telling Time, we see the environment taking on 
on an even greater role in the world we live in today for two primary reasons. One being how connected we are to technology. Adding, because we are so connected to something that's not real, so to speak, we really need to find that balance closely and intimately with something that is real and you don't get more real than nature. Pressman went on to say that nature gives us energy, among other things, calling living coral animating and life affirming. The shade has already appeared on fashion runways, influencer posts on social media, and in consumer packaging. Living Coral follows the 2018 color of the year, ultraviolet, which paid homage to the late icon, Prince. Okay, so what you just heard was Pantone's 2019. So we know that 2020 is now classic blue. 2019, it was a coral color, and you maybe even liked that coral color. Um, in fact, we just got done painting our house, and our house is not a classic blue, but it is a shade of blue, and our trim color is coral. We love that color. It's a good accent color, and it, again, it's vibrant, but it is just a touch uh, soft enough so that you can mix it in with other colors and not lose it or it makes it feel too bold. So these are some of the other colors that go along with last year's coral i still think you're fine from a design perspective to run coral as a secondary color as a main color on a page um, so let's take a look at what other colors go well with the pantone uh, with the pantone coral we have um, a storm gray gray always goes well with a bulk of colors you have a darker forest green you have a martini olive like a sort of a brownish color you've got a golden lime that has hues of yellow in it you've got um, you see the twirl has a little has brown tones, the living coral, which we just talked about, and we've got a little bit of red in that mob wood. Um, you see how the harmony really goes together with that coral, how you have that contrast between the browns, the browns and the light, you know, the browns on the top row and then the gray and the greens in the second row. All of those living coral, I said, even mentions it warmly engages. Um, the palette and focus and becomes your focal point. And when you even use in spot color purposes and you use that living coral, it's just a pop, okay? So it doesn't have to be the main part of your design, but it can be just one color in there. And maybe it's a word, maybe it's a letter, maybe it's just um, the background on one particular part. It is gonna stand out. And you can still get away with some of those neutral colors like the gray there or the brown where you know, you don't lose that coral and it just doesn't stand out too much. So let's take a look. We have Laurel a Living Coral, the two, uh, color of the year from 2019. We can look back at some of the pinks, the blues, uh, and some other colors. If you're looking for Pantone numbers, this would be the slide for you in terms of, you can see a little bit of that Pantone rose quartz is a nice subtle um, rose color that might help you, a pink color that would help you go through. And let's look to see where we see this in 2019. Um, again, we have another shot of a bedroom. We have some pink, some white, some oranges. You can see how um, those brighter colors that we saw before the Pantone um, was introduced, we can see how they're introduced. You also see um, sort of that the area, the second slide on the top where you have um, what looks to be like a wash area that has that accent wall um, with the carpet of the green. Uh, just to the right of in-home decor by the mirror image where the three plants are in green, you see that pink color. Um, it's not a coral, but it's more of a rose color. And those, see how the green and the white and the, you know, that rose color really come together. And, and then you can look in the kitchen design. Um, you see the, the grays really popping through um, and that in the silver and the brown. Okay, and then you can see that classic blue on the bottom right hand side where you have the um, it looks like a little living room accent wall or a full wall and you have the other colors that really go well go well with that classic blue color. Where do we see this in some of merchandising? We can look and we see the Carvana bed and breakfast. Do they have a rose color um, or you know, more traditional 20, uh, 2019, uh, almost coral color for a cup of coffee. And then you can sort of see the hybrid colors between the blue and the white, the red and the black, where you can mix and match different patterns in different colors. And if you look at the top left, 
you can see how there is that uh, mapping for Melbourne 2015, how you just have that little strip of color. You know, like I mentioned before, color doesn't necessarily need to be the big bold thing on your page. It could be the one subtle thing on your page that pulls that flash of color, that pop of life into a page, draws your attention to the one area that you're looking for. Um, when we look at weddings um, for 2019 going into 2020, Again, these are trends, right? We, we look at where do we see color in life? So we can see some of that rose quartz. We can see that almost proton purple. We can see, um, you know, a little bit of that coral um, on these pages and we can sit on these photos and we can sort of see how color interchanges with each other, with the, the colors interchange with themselves and how they really stand out on a page. Well, where do we see this in the other yearbook? Where do we see, how do we see color? Um, when we're talking about yearbook pages, we, we're really taking a look at when you're at this time of year, you're like, okay, what's my theme gonna be? What are our themes gonna look like? What colors are we gonna use? I can tell you for our school, we're locked into our two school codes, but we always leave room for two school codes, <laughs> two school colors. And then what we do from there is we try going after three new colors that really speak to the tone of the book. And I ask my students to talk about why oh, the certain red, why the certain blue, why the certain green, why, you know, how are those colors, what do they represent and how do they go through? But let's take a look at some yearbook colors and how they interchange. Well, first off, we have the first book, we see the word synergy, right? Now I used this last year and I'm gonna rep, uh, change these for the, this upcoming year with the new 2020 palette, but we look at synergy, we look at that uh, purple color, that pink purple color and how it pops on a page. And if you look, you can see those elements of the pinks and the purples and really shine. So the word synergy and how those colors, that color represents isn't dominating but it accents everything and it blends with everything. Just goes, the same goes for what's next. It's used as a background piece. So you have the, you know, the aqua color along with the pink and it stands out with a white text. And that's a big thing. You need to pay attention to whether it's a white text or a black text on a box and see what stands out. You don't want to lose the text, but you don't want it to be too bold and take away from um, the, those colors that match in there. Um, you don't need to choose um, whether or not to have that color as something bold. You can keep it as a shape, just like you have and we're home on the bottom right-hand side where it's a shape and a color, okay? And it stands out and it draws your eyes to that central focal point of um, the, the coach or educator and the student. And then on the bottom left, again, color doesn't necessarily just need to be wowed everywhere, an exclamation mark then put in with white type and then they use different colors that they'll you'll probably be able to see throughout their book and that stands out as well again we're looking at how can we use these colors how can we use these colors on our pages total the next set of pages the same way now i want you to pay attention to some of these because we're looking at again is how do i use those colors on my pages without being overwhelming and keep my design intact. Um, one of the things that young designers do is put too much color and they just, it almost looks like a clown exploded on a page. That's the way I always explain to my students. I, too much color can be damaging, okay? You wanna make sure that your color is purposeful, um, it has real reason, and it has a meaning. Like, why are you using color there? Is it to pop a word like it is and what's inside because those words are a focal point for your reader and you want to get them, them to that point. Is it more of a situation where you sort of need to have a brighter color that would just engage the for the entire page like it is on Keep On Shining on sort of these end sheets, okay? Do you want that bright color to just pop the whole thing Okay, or do you want it as a like a sort of a spot color, like on the bottom right hand side where you you think you know long mount, but it's it's not that simple, and you can see how that color uh, behind the knot and the simple that S I M and how they really stand out are just the iconish type colors that pull your eye to that location, and then simply you have those notepads um, and the sticky notes on the top. Get comfortable with your future. 
those, um, again, if I just had yellow sticky notes and I slapped what it looks like, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 sticky notes all in that yellow, it's gonna sit on the page, right? But what if I had three or four different colors and I changed them up? There's a meaning of why I did that, right? It's, like, it's not gonna look as consistent as the yellow. It's gonna bring flashes of um, pops of color. It's gonna force me to move along with the page. It's gonna create movement on a page. That is important for the reader, right? Every element of color is important for the reader and understanding how to use it and understanding like in the bottom center, how do the colors interchange um, with and interact, I should say, with regards to your subject, right? Um, complementary, make sure the colors are complementary unless you're trying to go for something bold and shocking. Um, but you can see on that bottom center how the background and the foreground really go with each other. If you're a newspaper person, like I was for many, many years, and you have color availabilities on your front, maybe you'll have it on a double truck, you know, throughout your newspaper. It's important to see how does color interact in your world because you're not hindered as much. Your books are hindered, right? We know this. Your books have three, four different colors that they're forced to use and throughout their entire book, they're not going to use 15, 20 different colors in their book because they've got um, a palette that they have to use. Um, newspapers in some worlds can be a little bit more flexible, or at least it has in, in my life. Um, but let's take a look at seeing how color interchanges with uh, and interacts on those pages. So we look at the newsletter, and again, we see how that Zika apocalypse, right? We have Zika in a color, it's a spot color. Not the whole thing is color, right? Because there's no, you, what is the purpose of the color you're using and why are you doing it? The Zika is, right? So Z, you have that, that pulls the eye to the reader. Same goes for the mosquito, right? We have a mosquito there that has a target. It's the same color red as the Zika and that target pulls the reader there, right? And everything else is simply black. And, and you know, so you have good white space with that page and the color pulls you in, but it doesn't just beat you over the head. Same goes for the daily advertiser, right? We have, this page doesn't even have art. There's no photos on this page um, with regards to the centerpiece. It's an illustration. And that centerpiece illustration uses just different forms of blue and color to um, get you through. So you can use color when you don't have main art right and the same goes um and this uh, and the other one where they have the sexism in the state house you have one photo which is again just a portrait a simple portrait photo but you've got a good illustration photo illustration and then you have gray right so gray is a nice strong powerful color that with white with a white drop cap there and that little bit of a gold um everything sort of goes together and you can see how that gold uh, the gray really stands out on the top half, we have three um, fellow newspapers as well. We have the Argus Leader. Again, the Argus Leader uses a red and it uses it in a way that uses it as a spot color type situation. When we look at the middle spread, what we're looking at again is, now this was a planned photo, right? We all know this. This wasn't just put together. Somebody walked up to a table and said, ooh, let me take a picture of this. This is planned, but look at our colors here. Look how they interchange with each other. Look how um, the green and the white and the brown and the um, and the red and all of them just really stand and complement each other so beautifully. And how the placement are we don't we have a red like a salsa or something that is next to a green and we know that red and green match from where well obviously several sports teams um, but we know Christmas red and green go well white will go well with many many different colors and it stand out so against that background color that you have there the white really pops so really pay attention to how your colors uh, interact with each other as well um, and you can interchange them you can move them around and then we have the democrat and chronicle and again with a simple little portrait on the bottom you have some color on the top and just that simple color on the top and the bottom really make your page stand out and can give you good anchor points. So you don't need to feel like your page is lacking. You can use something along these ends to keep your reader um, moving from the top to the bottom. Okay, there is a part of this presentation that I'm gonna ask you to 
pause it, put on a brief hold. This is one of them, because here's the deal. I've attached two sheets for you. In those two sheets, one of which is a quiz. The second is going to be testing your knowledge of split complementary, double complementary triads, all the rest. And I want you to sort of know them to speak the lingo when you're talking to other designers and other visual artists. The first one though is a little bit of a quiz to guess sort of your knowledge of how colors interact with your life, okay? So pause it, attach to this document or to wherever you got or this link should be, should be, two different forms of paper, and one will have 10 questions. What I want you to do is pause me again, answer the questions when you're done, come back. I'll wait. Okay, welcome back. So how'd you do? Let's take a look at sort of some of these uh, answers that you were given. Number one, um, while certain shades of light green and even pink can be soothing to some, lighter blue hues are widely believed to have a naturally soothing effect on, white, uh, on most people. For number two, red. Red is color often associated with passion, anger, aggression, and energy. It's no surprise that some salespeople print their off uh, offices red. The color can help bring out their natural energy and assertiveness. Number three. Looks are deceiving. Colors can be arranged using the color wheel, a, mod a model developed by Sir Isaac Newton in the 1600s. Colors are closer together and wheels are less complementary colors and far apart. Number four, office time. This one asked you what color should you paint your office or have as a background. Green doesn't cause a lot of eye strain, so you should definitely save your energy in getting work done. Number five. Researchers have found that orange actually energizes you and in increasing oxygen supply to the brain. So when you're going to do your workouts, wear orange. Who knew? Or go out looking like a construction cone. Obviously, the color of passion. Red is six, your answer for six, and what a um, woman should wear on a date. And number seven on a date, if you're wondering what your man should wear, blue. Blue indicates stability. Blue is the way to go. So if they don't show up, they show up to your house wearing anything but blue, close the door and say, sorry, you're just not wearing that right color. In 1999, back in black, um, a study showed that NHL teams in black jerseys were assessed more penalties. They had a darker, um, a darker appeal. Um, and there was a, a Chicago White Sox baseball team had a theme, um, good guys wear black. And they were trying to play off the motto that if you wore black colors, you know, you're always considered to be the anti, you know, the villain. So um, the back, uh, good guys wear black, was trying to play off that. But a 1999 study showed that those teams that wore black jerseys were assessed more penalties. Well, I don't know if you get number nine or not, but in the study that they showed, students presented with a red participant number scored about 20% lower than the students who got a green or black number. So they showed um, that if you had a green or black number, okay, um, you got a higher score, but if you were given a red, okay. And number 10, yellow. Okay. Yellow is the one that if I'm in the back of the room right now and I was presenting this and I put up a yellow screen right now in back of you and said, told the people in the back of the room and said, okay, read that. It's going to be tougher for them, right? Um, yellow is um, constrain your eyes. So before you go to a yellow background or use yellow as a spot color, if you do that in your yearbook and it's not big enough, it will be hard unless you're using a black background with a yellow, it's gonna be hard for some readers to see it. So be careful. So what are some of the basics? We sort of know what the color wheel is and the color wheel has been around since the year 1666. We know of Sir Isaac Newton and his ability to show you that circle diagram and looking at what a color palette is, right? And we can see how the color palette has had some subtle changes over the years with the um, color palettes and the color wheels to your right. 
we can look at different colors and sort of a, a 12 part series, right? And these colors went side by side, um, such as yellow, green, yellow, and yellow, orange, are uh, the three colors uh, sort of predominate with each other and we can see how those colors go well. We can see how in nature we see colors and, and sort of those complementary colors and how colors interact with each other and how sort of why did we say the green and red all of a sudden look good? Well, because we've seen it in nature and we've seen how good it looks in nature. And on the right hand side, you can see sort of this 1980s approach to design where we have shapes, different shapes. We have a, a green shape and a hunter green shape and a red and, uh, and a yellow. And we can sort of see how those colors based on nature work together. Now here's something. Complementary colors. This makes complete sense once you think about it. Two colors that go well that complement each other. On a color wheel, the best way to do this is simply just draw a straight line or a, a line from wherever the one color you're looking at and draw it straight back or parallel to the color on the opposite side of your color wheel. So, and for instance, we start taking a look at it. If we did, um, right now you see sort of the green and the purple that you can see in nature again. But if you draw your eye in the state of Florida to the blue and then draw your line in your, in your mind from the blue here to your orange, you'll sit there with UF colors, right? Um, these are sort of some of those items that you maybe didn't pay attention to before, but complementary colors are directly opposite from each other. So just draw that line from one end to the next. And this is an illustration above or below. There are several variations of yellow and green leaves, variations of red and purple in the orchids. So let's take a look at a little bit deeper into the colors. First off, we have reds. Red is the color of extremes. It's the color of passionate love, seduction, violence, danger, anger, and adventure. Okay, we know of red as the color of fire and blood, energy of primal forces. It is red is one of the top two favorite colors of all people. Red is the pop, most popular color used on flags in the world. In fact, approximately 77% of all flags include the color red. However, all reds are not equal and how men and women look at reds are different, okay? Aside from light and dark shades of reds, there are two different kinds. Yellow-based reds are those tomato reds. Blue-based reds are berry reds, okay? Some may argue and claim that men are more attracted to those tomato reds, whereas females are connected to the berry reds, all right? In context, in using red is everything. For example, when red is placed on a black background, it glows with an otherworldly fire. On a white background, red appears somewhat duller. In contrast with orange, red appears lifeless. Think about that if I had a red and orange, orange page. It sure be bright, but I would definitely, that red would not pop as much. And if you haven't done that before, definitely do that. Let's take a look at blues. Blue is the favorite color of all people. It's also that 2020 color. It's, na it's found in nature and water and sky, but it's rarely found in fruits and vegetables. Today, blue is embraced as the color of heaven, authority, denim jeans, and corporate logos. Hence, classic blue, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, you can go on and on about the different um, apps that you can find. Um, it has, on the other hand, blue involved as a symbol of depression in the American culture. Singing the blues, feeling blue, all right? Um, blue is the number one favorite color of all people. Blue is for baby girl and pink is for baby boy in Belgium. Although I've had one person over the years come and stop me and say, I'm from Belgium and that is not true or I've never heard of it. So that one might be a little bit outdated. Designing with blue. Blue ranks so high as your favorite color that you can't go wrong. However, blue can be overused and might wind up another design cliche if you use alone. Combining blue with another color creates more creative effects, right? So use blue, don't over blue something, all right? Think about ways that you can use spot color. You don't have to have the whole background as blue to stand out. Think about this page. We have a blue on the left. We have blue on, we have that sort of blueberries on the right. 
which is more of a purple. I have blue in the font color. You can have too much. Green, all right, we know go green. And when we say go green in, that, in advertising or marketing, they use green or they'll use a brownish, but more likely they're gonna use a green. They didn't use a red for go green, they use green. And it's used for um, signifying growth, rebirth, okay? It's the universal symbol of nature and it symbolizes ecology and ecology in the, in the environment. It says it's a flexible color. It can be warm in the yellow green side. It can be in a, a, a color wheel and cool in the blue green and aquamarine. A lime green can make a design pop. Olive green is much more subdued, right? Um, used beiges and browns when goes along with it. Um, green. I've used olive green in my kitchen one year. Think, you know, um, an olive green was a nice, subtle color. Not subtle. Because it's a, it is colorful, but it's not. It's a little bit dulled because it has some of those brown tones in there. Olive green, right? I've never painted my house lime green, although I love that lime green color, especially it, it does stand out. Um, I love aquamarine. Um, you, you you do get some of that blue. You know, you have the blues in there, but with aquamarine, you do have those green tints in there. Yellow, which by the way, before we get into yellow, um, yellow is the um, universal or one of the universal colors of um, anger. Um, years and years and years ago, I wanted a Jeep Wrangler. And at the time, my wife said, no, no, yellow. We do not want you driving along there. And um, I've had people tell me that when they see yellow, it makes them angry. It makes them upset. So yellow is the most luminous color of all the colors on the spectrum, right? It draws our attention more than any others. It's the color of sunflowers, daffodils, egg yolks. It's the color of happiness and optimism. But however, there is that other side of yellow that has cowardice, betrayal, and madness, right? So don't think just because you're going to think, oh, yellow is going to be colorful and it's going to be, people are going to think of sunshines and, and all the rest, and there's going to be a, a dark side to it. And some people might get upset when they see yellow. Plus, again, yellow is that one color that you're not going to be able to see too well. Um, there's different shades of yellow ranging from cream to lemon to cold, and yellow works extremely well as a companion to darker colors. We see that in the football field, right? We know that the Pittsburgh Steelers uses black and black and yellow, right? That net yellow really stands out. My school's colors are purple and gold, you know, purple and yellow, and, and again, that yellow stands out against the purple background, right? So it can really be used as a bold color, all right? But it also can be subtle, right? So you play around with the different um, different shades of, of yellow. Um, for more earthy color schemes, mix yellow with brown and moss for olive green. Combined with light green and orange, yellow creates a citrus or fruity palette. Black and yellow can be combined to cr uh, create an industrial look, which is why that black and um, gold, uh, black and yellow of the Pittsburgh Steelers, they are obviously a steel country, right? And so it, it has that industrial look to it. <laughs> So 2020, let me pause this here. If 2020 is classic blue, 2019 were some um, colorful tints of the pinks, the purples, the greens, and all the rest. 2018 was pastels. Now, we just got done with Easter, and some of my students decided, hey, let's, for their color palette, they had more used more of the pastel. The problem is, this is the first evidence I can tell you right now where a color is sort of starting to sort of be out of style. So please be careful when you're using pastel because it can become outdated. And colors 
can do that, all right? There are certain colors that uh, become, oh, that's a retro color, or well, I haven't seen those color, com like I can look at different color combinations from the 1980s, and so the, that's, those are 80s colors. Um, I can look at the 1990s where teal was in, teal's huge, um, and that's why you have like the Charlotte Hornets, the Jacksonville Jaguars, teams that came in at that time were using teal on everything right and now we look at it there was a point where teal was completely out the jaguars even changed all their didn't change their colors but they went to more of a blacker color where they use the teal as an accent because we're like ah, teal's just not in anymore pastels were 2018 and it is an evidence that um it is a color that will date your yearbook right if you use pastels 10 15 years from now they're like why did they use that color well it was in those colors were in two years ago same goes for coral. My house, the, the, the accent walls of coral might look great now, five, 10 years from now. So I go, why is that coral used in that house? That does not look good at all. Okay. Well, here's your second sheet. And in your second sheet, you're going to match the terms, right? And I've given you six terms right here. Uh, it's giving you adjacent colors, complementary colors, double split, complementary, monochrome, single split, and triad. And without knowing, I want you to go ahead and use that second sheet of paper that I gave you, sort of match what goes with what. Now, when I look at it, the first one only has one color. So you should know what is that prefix that goes along with one. And I give the answer for the first one. And then go through them. We talked about complementary colors and how you can tell where a complementary color is. These shouldn't be too difficult. You can see where something has three. Oh, what's the prefix for three? Um, and go through, and again, I'll wait for you to pause this screen. I'll wait for you. And when you're ready, come back. Welcome back. Hopefully you got all of these colors. Number one was a monochrome, right? We just had the one color. Two was complementary. And, and let's go back to one monochrome as a photograph or picture developed and executed in black and white or varying tones of one color. Remember just one color, that's the whole purpose of monochrome, not multiple. Complementary. Complementary colors are two hues positioned exactly opposite in the color wheel balance. Number three. Split complementary, right? So the colors are going to be split. Number four is an adjacent color. Number five was a triad. And you can always go back to the other screen if you have to. But number five was a triad. You had that sort of a little bit of a, um, a triangle when you were looking at it. So that the prefix tri meaning three. And then you had double split complementaries. These are four colors on either side of a, of a complementary color wheel. They're exactly opposite from each other on the color wheel. And for those to know what that is, split complementary is number six. So again, top is number one, number two, number three, four, five, and six. Split complementary has two complementary, um, two different colors, altogether four, but you line them up that way. But where else do we see colors? How else can I look at different colors in different places? And if you are a sports fan like me, you can find them everywhere. And I love color. And so they, um, sportslogos.net came up with a couple of years ago, um, sort of the color wheel of minor league baseball teams. The interesting thing is this is now dated back a couple of years, but it is, um, I have not seen one elsewhere, but you can see that if you are from the state of Florida, there are several teams in there. You have the St. Lucie um, team, you have um, Cardinals team that is out of Palm Beach. They have the Jacksonville Suns who are now the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimps. Um, but you can see all of the different ba uh, baseball teams and how color and the different colors that they are using. And I'm gonna pause this for a second and actually I'll just talk through it and let you go through and see if you can identify businesses to their color because we know that we can identify color to a specific business. So in the first one, what's the brand? Is it Apple, Google, Samsung, or T-Mobile? 
It's T-Mobile. Number two, guess the sport. Football, basketball, baseball, NASCAR. A little bit of a trick question. Actually, you have football. You can go with um, the LSU Tigers. Oh, that's more of a school, but you can uh, basketball, Lakers. Los Angeles Lakers have purple and gold. What about number three? What company uses that brown? Is it British Airways, DHL, Ryanair, or UPS? Yep, it's UPS. And lastly, what company uses that green? Is it Amazon, GoDaddy, Goodreads, or TripAdvisor? It's a tough one. You guys don't might not have your own websites yet, but that is GoDaddy. That is a GoDaddy green. Let's go to the next set. What company uses that green on the left? BMW, Caterpillar, John Deere, or Toyota? John Deere. Now we have two different reds coming up. The first red, what store uses that red? Is it Home Depot, Target, Kmart, or Walmart? Target. And what colors Walmart use? Ah, blue, almost like a classic blue. What about the red? Budweiser, Burger King, Coca-Cola, McDonald's? Good, Coca-Cola. And lastly, what color is that purple? And this one people don't necessarily get all the time. Is it Cadbury, Dannon, Nestle, or Taco Bell? Here's your hint, we just passed that season. Nope, not Taco Bell, everybody. It is Cadbury, Cadbury purple. In fact, they trademark, trademarked that purple, that specific purple. You go look it up, they use that purple. If you're looking for a website, you're looking for a website because you want to know more about triads, you want to know, look at uh, monochromic, you want to look at um, double complementary, split complementary, how colors interact with each other. Um, I, you can find this throughout the internet. There's plenty of places to go. But if you're looking for a color wheel that will give you options in terms of how colors interact with different colors, and you're looking for, um, again, what is my complementary color to this? What is my split complementary? What are my triad colors? Um, you're gonna to wanna to go to a website called palatin.com. I've left it here for you. Um, this is a website that I've used in the past. It will also give you your CMYK, RGB, and all your numbers that go along so that if you want to use them in your own colors um, and your own um, design, up on top, you can see Again, we're looking at, here's my triad, split complementary. We can take a look at all of those things that we've been talking about in here. Now, we talked about 2020 with regards to Pantone and what they said. Now, going into this year, one of the things, other ways, that other colors that were into 2020, outside of the classic blue, were some of those rustic reds. The coral reef stood the, stood over and pushed through another year. Well, we start getting into our blue, that totally teal, which isn't teal there, but it has a blue. This is sea garden, pink out. We still have some of those brighter colors from, from 2019 leak into colors that you could use in your own book. Same goes here. You can see that classic blue under the revolution tab being uh, as colors that could stand out. That's where they're, you're sort of getting that classic blue under, between under the sea and revolution. We'll start to see that. But we see the sea foam green. We see the teal come through. We do see those blues popping through and some pinks and yellows. And so if you're looking for your 2020 book, because now is the time that you're going to start coming up with that 2020, 2021 um, theme project of yours. And maybe you're not doing it to the summer. Maybe you're going to wait. But if you're looking for colors in terms of what is going well for this year going into next, this is one avenue to look at, especially looking at the Pantone 2020 color if you're looking for more of a classic look. So about some of these colors, first off, use color to emphasis and headlines and graphics to provide variety in design, okay? Use, pick a color palette and use all of the colors in the opening. Then for all the other sections, use a single color from the palette. This unifies your book and gives all sections an individual flair. This is all for your book. 
Check your readability when running type on black on color backgrounds. For example, avoid reversing type on light backgrounds and printing in black and on black on dark backgrounds. Think about all the elements of your design when planning color, white space or black text to make the smallest amount of your color pop off the page. And again, find a color combination that inspires your 2020 vision. Don't have to have, you can use a full pay, a full uh, spread for yearbookers, a full spread in blue, white, different colors that go along with it. Or you can just have that one word, that one symbol like you've seen in all of those examples to really help your design move forward. Well, this wraps everything up. It's sort of been a weird way to do a convention considering I'm not in Nashville and we're definitely not in Orlando. So um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, and I normally get a lot of questions when it comes to design and color theory and all the rest, and I sort of just breeze through this more than I typically would in a normal session. So if you have questions for me, please, please, please email me at uh, gmail.com. is my Mike W. Bjork at gmail.com. If you have a question you need to get a hold of me on the phone, again, I'm District 2 Director. I'm used to receiving phone calls from various advisors and students all the time. If you have a question about color theory and all the rest, Okay, and then if you like to find me anywhere else you can, I'm not super huge on all the rest. Um, I like to sort of lurk more than anything. However, I am one of those people that is the avid learner. You'll find that um, if you're a designer or an aspiring designer or somebody that likes color, become a sponge, find things, go like uh, save them. Um, back in the day, I used to have a binder of just different page designs and colors, um, how color interacted and interchange with each other. So look for ways to build your own portfolio of knowledge and then use those to create something for yourself. So if you need anything, the best advice I can tell you is email me, call me, do what you need to do, but explore. Don't be limited. Hopefully your school for your yearbook, hopefully your school has um, updated yearbooks. Don't keep those ones that have been around for 10, 15 years outside of yours, of course, because they're not going to help you with design trends. They're not going to help you with color trends. If you're a newspaper, go on to various different websites that have news. Um, I believe newspagedesigner.org is where my stuff is located at newspagedesigner.org. Go on there. Go find, uh, I know Newseum had their front pages daily and I'm not sure now that museums closed if they're continuing on with their today's front pages, but that was a place that I would always go and I'd build my, build my portfolio or my sort of library of pages when I would go through there. So don't be afraid to explore. Otherwise, it's been a pleasure and an honor to speak with you today. Have a good day. I hope you're having a great FSPA and best of luck.